turbo noises. It looks fine. <laughs> it actually looks really incredible. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mr. Song, you are a frequent visitor to this channel. We've featured so many of your cars. Yeah, and I'm absolutely grateful. It never gets lost on me what an honor and a privilege it is to be able to share these projects, especially with your audience, because I think you know, in a day and age where print media, you know, unfortunately is going away. I mean, I remember growing up in the, the builder scene and thinking like the, like the pinnacle was to try to get featured in a magazine, right? Oh, I got a cover, I got a feature. And it sort of immortalizes that build. And that opportunity really rarely exists anymore, you know? And so, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of automotive YouTube channels out there, but the one thing I appreciate about your channel and the one thing I think me and my friends agree is yours is a very comprehensive, true, video format of those former days of featuring a build, whereas everybody else is just sort of entertainment and antics and characters. But this is a huge honor for me to be able to share this. I appreciate that. And that's honestly my goal, right? Because these cars are still being built. Yeah. And who's going to feature them? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of content creators out there and there's a lot of self-publishing content creators. Mm -hmm you know, while they're actually doing the build and while they're creating, they're able to tell the story. Yeah. But the difference is you're building to build. Yeah. And, and when I say you're building to build, that's how you're able to end up with so many vehicles and so many different projects at the same time, debuting at the SEMA show or yeah. for whatever show. Mm -hmm. And you're just doing it just to create them. You're not actually telling the story as you go along because that's honestly probably impossible. Yeah. It's just so many cars. How many cars did you have this past year? So SEMA this year was five projects. Damn! And I do get that comment a lot. Like, why haven't you started a YouTube channel? Why haven't you documented your builds the way a YouTuber would? Number one, I don't have the skill set to film and edit and produce these because I know a lot of work goes into it. And number two is because the speed in which these cars are built, I can't build it in a way that creates like sort of episodes and, and new content. I have to just blow through some of these stuff. Yeah, and another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that they jump all over the place. Yeah, yeah. From shop to shop to shop to, to manufacture. Yep to this, that, and the other. You're always waiting for something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, of course you have your normal full-time job, <laughs> which uh, I'm sure a lot of it is paying for these bills. Yeah. You're doing it because you just love creating. And that's what's really important. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't, I don't have a, a, a part, a manufacturing company or a brand that I'm necessarily promoting. I'm still in that weird zone where I technically I'm a privateer. I'm just a grassroots builder uh, that's just doing it at slightly a different level, right? Uh, I'm not quite, again, a professional shop or a brand. Um, I've been very fortunate and very blessed to build such great relationships over the last two decades that allow me to be able to do projects, you know what I mean, simultaneously, right? I mean, the support in terms of just financial dollars from companies and sponsors allows me to be able to do this because there's no way that just my job and my business alone could pay for this. So I'm just like really grateful that I'm in a space where the hobby is still pure for me, but I get to do it at like this level that I never thought I could do it. So then this was this past year's SEMA built one of them. Yes. What are we looking at here? So we're looking at a, the, obviously the newest generation of the M4, the G82 chassis. And what we're specifically looking at here is the debut of a wide body program by Adro. Adro is a company out of Korea, fairly new, but definitely making some waves, producing and designing some incredible aero. And this G82, specifically this wide body, the special part about this wide body, number one, it was sort of a halo hero project for them. They aren't doing this to necessarily maximize sales. Um, they're doing this to demonstrate their ability as a manufacturer to produce quality parts um, at this level. So there's actually only 10 kits that will be made. And basically they've cost, they priced out the kits to just basically recoup their initial development costs to do these, right? To create the molds and the prototypes and everything. And so that's one that's very special that only 10 of these kits will ever be made. And this car happens to be 
serial badge 00. So there's a cool story behind that. Um, when Adro approached me to build this car, Adro is obviously a brand that really, really is big about quality. And so they felt like they needed to trust the builder and not just blindly sponsor somebody who says, hey, I got a thousand followers, I got a million YouTube ch subscribers, S sponsor me. They wanted to vet the builder for the first time. And so I have a, you know, a good relationship with Davis, the chief designer at Adro, and he's followed my work and my builds and said, hey, like, we think you'd be the perfect candidate to debut this. Because ultimately, as good as the kit is, if somebody poorly installs it or poorly executes it, it reflects on the company. And so I think they really, really wanted to make sure that this was represented in the best way possible. Of course, as a builder, I wanna be the first to do stuff. So I said, hey, I want kit number one, thinking it was one through 10. Um, and they had told me that they had actually already collected a deposit from another customer for kit number one. That was the agreement. So then Agile Korea went back and forth and we agreed to building an unofficial zero zero car, which would be serve as the North America demo car for them. And so this is, yeah, this is car zero zero, not one of the 10 retail kits, but essentially an 11th one to demonstrate again, like I said, to be an official demo car for Adro. So Adro, they really cut their teeth in fixing <laughs> the front end and fixing the look yeah. of these vehicles because a, a lot of people, you know, th there's all those big grill jokes yeah. uh, when it comes to these newer BMWs. What they've done is they've taken upon themselves to improve the look as much as they can. Yeah. So then this is the absolute extreme to that. Yeah. So what they did was kind of smart. I mean, the, the G chassis and these new generation of BMWs, it's, it's been kind of polarizing, especially with the enlarged kidney grills. And so it's been very controversial. And so Adro actually released a G series, a G80, G82, standard kit first. And this front bumper that you're looking at, the full complete replacement front bumper was something that they produced for that. And so a, a non-wide body can use this bumper. And what they did was then module, made it modular to be able to attach the wide body on top of that. And so the only thing proprietary is really the front fender caps that you see or the bumper caps and then the, uh, some of the inserts and then the lower lip is specific to the wide body, but the bumper isn't. Right, because the normal one, the lip, wouldn't protrude as far. Yeah. And they have a non-wide body specific lip. It's similar to this, but it doesn't extend all the way out to the bumper caps. So then let, let's talk about the pieces that are part of the kit. Yep. Like you said, the bumper is something that anybody can buy for their normal G series just to improve the mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. uh, lip, um, this cap right here, yep. which still retains the park uh, sensors. The parking sensors. This fender. Yep. Right? Side skirt. Mm-hmm. And moving on back. What else? This whole side yeah, skirt, whole which side is skirt. insane. Yeah. And then this is the uh, rear overflare. Overflare. That just looks so much wider. How much wider is this kit? I don't know the spec. I think it's about 65 mil wider on each side. Yeah. And then the rear, I mean, it still retains the rear bumper, OEM bumper, but it has this lower diffuser panel that starts with the side strakes going all the way back. And then it also features this sort of new two-piece wing, this, this swan neck wing. This is so pretty. Yeah. And what's really cool about Adro, a couple things to be like to know. Number one is obviously Davis is the chief designer there, but they actually hired someone by the name of Scott, who's a like he is an aerodynamicist. Like his job, he designed and he worked for Formula One designing aero. So all of this stuff, beyond the visual look of it, this stuff is all CFD tested. It goes through all of their sort of modeling program before it's released. And so they stand behind what they're making, that it's beyond just visual enhancements, you know? The other thing is obviously all, I mean, the car is obviously done to a one uniform body color, but if you actually look closely, and if you look at the print texture, you can see that this, all the fenders are dry carbon. So you can kind of, kind of like a Ferrari F40, you know, the way you can see the OEM paint and you can see the texture of the carbon, you can subtly see it. The other thing we did was inside of each fender well, if you look deep inside, mm -hmm. we've left it exposed so you can see that that fender was a carbon piece. So front fender, full dry carbon, rear fender, full dry carbon. Obviously the whole thing is pre prepped dry carbon, you know? And then, so this is, is this dry carbon also? Yeah, yes, it is. But it's just cleared over. Yep, yep. So they have obviously the exposed parts that come glossy for you to clear coat. Um, and then they have the parts that obviously if you wanted to, you can buff, polish. In theory, you could have left the fenders exposed. 
Um, but I chose to obviously color match it to the car. Oh, so this is paint? No, it's vinyl wrap. Oh, this is Or actually, it's, it's called PP, it's color change PPF. It's a brand new material from Inozatec. So Inozatec obviously has been like known for their paint-like vinyl, but nonetheless, vinyl doesn't necessarily have self-healing properties. And so if you don't care for it properly, you'll still get swirls and scratches. And so Inozatec about a year ago released a new line called Dynamic PPF. So it gives you the best of both worlds. You have the ability to color change your car like vinyl. It gives you paint-like finish, but then it also has self-healing properties and rock, it prevents against rock damage. So, you know, this was a, a, a new color that they had debuted. And so I wanted to use this color because I know like British Racing Green is very popular, but I wanted something a little brighter. And the cool part is how many people walk up and say, is this paint? And they just, they yeah. can't. Oh, it fooled yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it really is so clean. It's like glass up here. <laughs> and then oh, down here, you can definitely tell that it's carbon. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. from the texture. Yep. Um, let's talk about the wheel and tire setup. So, as always, as a Toyo ambassador, this is on Toyo Proxis tires. And this time, obviously, a lot of the builds I have are usually r rs Just the size of this tire, there's no application for that wheel series. So we went with a Proxis Sport tire. This is the rears of 345-25. To give you kind of an idea, that's like almost a 13 inch wide it's tire. Very, very I mean, it's, wide. it's like a Murcielago Aventura yeah, rear tire. It's crazy wide. And these are our custom built uh, Work VSXX wheels. JC over at Work Wheels in Japan was very gracious to be able to build these in time because we had to wait for the specs to be able to build out the wheels. You only get one chance at SEMA, right? There's no redo. So we ran the closest measurements possible. We dialed in the final fitment that you see here using obviously small spacers, but we got pretty dang close. This is what they call their platinum gold finish. So it's almost like a white gold, um, not like a, like a warm, warm gold, which I think is a, it's a cool combination versus the standard, again, green and bright golds, you know? Yeah, and then what are the specs? You know what, I don't know it off the top of my head. I wanna say, I mean, they're 20 inch wheels. Uh, mm -hmm. So the standard G82 runs a staggered uh, 19 in, in, up front and 20 in the rear. We ended up going for a 2020 because I wanted to have a matching sidewall profile so that it doesn't have the sort of the rake that you would see on a standard car. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, this should be a 20 by 10 and a half in the front, and this should be a 20 by 13 in the rear. So you started with a brand new car. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so again, we didn't get to five projects intentionally. It was accidental. I had three projects committed to, and then last minute opportunities come up. There was a brand that wanted me to build a new generation Prius. I said yes, and then Adro came to me late into the year, probably around late, maybe early August, and said, hey, we'd like you to build a G82. I said, guys, my, my schedule's full. I've already bought the cars. I've already sunk the money in. I don't know if I could do this. And then they really, I mean, we went back and forth a few times until we arrived at a place where it was worth doing. So I went out and purchased this G82 at BMW Irvine, <laughs> I think August 26th. And then it was getting cut up on like September 1st, something like that. <laughs> so how many miles is on it right now? <laughs> well, it was, it was a used G82. I bought it with 10,800 miles. When it went to SEMA, it was like 10,911 miles. <laughs> so less than 100 miles before I did this. Who makes the hood? That's also Adro. Oh. Yeah. So everything on the exterior is Adro minus the full trunk in the rear. The trunk is a CSL style trunk. It's also a dry carbon piece. And that one's made by a company out of Spain called Carbonius. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, can we take a look at under the hood? Yeah, absolutely. And then we'll start talking about the engine bay. Yeah, this trunk is really, really nice. That really goes with the theme as well. Yeah. Adro doesn't make uh, trunk yet. No, so there, this swan neck wing that they designed was mm. originally designed for it to go over the standard G82 trunk. So it will work, even their reinforcement plates are designed to work with the standard G82 trunk. I decided because I had an opportunity through IND to, to, to get acquired this piece. This is actually the first trunk that Carbonius did. This piece came to an event in SoCal when IND did an event with CSF. And it was, a, it was again, it's a demo piece. Um, but I saw it, it was beautiful, and I asked IND if Carbonius would want to use their trunk for this car. They said yes. Again, you can see the dry carbon construction. Um, we laid over the CAD data of this trunk against the CAD data of the wing base mounts from Adro, and we realized it actually will marry up. The only thing I had to custom do was to create these reinforcement brackets, which is, again, 
to the shape of specifically the CSL style trunk. And yeah. with that, then I was able to marry the two together. This is so nice. I mean, buttons work. Yep. The frame is really nice. It looks like it's recreating. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's probably an aluminum piece, the stock yep, one. Yep, yep. And then the cool thing is the aluminum trunk actually has a sort of a fabric, you know, a liner cover here. Obviously, if I use that piece, it would sort of hide all of the beautiful carbon work. And so what I did was I left it intentionally exposed. And what I did was I ran the wire harness through the inner skeleton. We were able to find clever mm. ways to wire tuck it. And even like the button relocation, this normally on the stock trunk exists right about here on the fabric piece. Oh. We relocated it here, again, hidden, keeps everything clean, visually doesn't obstruct this piece, but I know I can still close my trunk when I need to. That is so flex, man. <laughs> what an absolute flex. Yeah. So all the air system, everything is back here. Yep. And this is a, a Prazis air system. They're one of the only companies in the world that has a G82 specific air strut versus a custom built strut. And so they were able to send over their whole system, including the dual compressors and air management system. And then my friend Roy over at Dirty Works, uh, who is a phenomenal air suspension expert, he went ahead and did the install. And this is a first for me because I mean, all the builds you featured and all the cars I build, I generally steer towards static suspension, like coilovers, whether it be one-way, two-way, three-way suspension. I'm still generally a static suspension person. Two reasons we went with air with this car. Number one is I, I was told by Adro when they were developing the car in Korea that there is gonna be some clearance issues if I stay on static. Much like the A90 Supras that we built, the Varus and the Pandem one, we had a lot of front wheel clearance issues. Even stock owners who are running spacers to do a more flush fitment, they're already rubbing fender liner. I mean, that's like 15 mil, 20 mil. So imagine what happens when you go 65 mil, you're gonna like hit everything. And so I needed air suspension for the practicality of just being able to maneuver the car. But I also figured with a car like this, just that sort of the stance, the visual presence of a car with the wheel slightly tucked, I mean, you can't beat it for a presence like this, you know? So mm. I think the presentation is better on air. I, I like this. I think it's a great cruiser. Yep. Um, I think it's something that, you know, it's not pretending to be a race car, <laughs> uh, but but it's some you're enjoying it for what it is. Absolutely. Yeah, and Absolutely. I, I really like that. Yeah. Um, since we're here, let's talk about the exhaust. Before, when you actually just started it, it sounded so good. Yeah. What What are we looking at here? So we're looking at a piece from Eisenman. Eisenman, this is their sort of race exhaust. Uh, it's a twin pipe race exhaust, obviously retains the factory valve controllers if you want to. It's been specially thermal coated by IND. So it has this, you know, the centers are black with their actual cosmetic carbon tips surrounding it. So typically you can option this to be silver with the carbon tips. I went with a black on black look. Again, it creates two different benefits. Again, a thermal barrier, as well as I just like the stealth look of it. So this is an Eisenman exhaust, Eisenman center pipe, and then it goes into a Studio RSR down pipe back into the engine. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the engine. Plethora of carbon, favorite material in the world. Here we're looking at the Eventuri uh, satin carbon intakes. This is an Eventuri engine cover to match the intakes. A company out of Korea called Indiv makes these cooler shrouds as well as this ECU cover to just, again, make it all cohesive. The CSF billet manifold, um, and I cut this window out so we can see that beautiful piece. This whole car is cooled by CSF. Auxiliary radiators, uh, the oil cooler, the heat exchangers, all CSF. Um, this bar, the CSL bar, this is a piece that literally arrived day one of SEMA. We installed this at the tread pass. Oh, this wow. is a CSL, obviously style strut bar, but all carbon. This one's also made by the same company who did the trunk, Carbonius. So this is uh, like their first one. IND hand carried this out to Vegas for me and said, because we didn't know if this was going to make it or not. Could you imagine just, just using that as a carry-on yeah, luggage? Yeah, yeah. Sir, you have to check that in. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously as little accents of aesthetics also, Golden Wrench uh, did these billet caps that you'll see. And what's really cool is uh, Mario of Golden Wrench, he knew I was doing this Inozotec color. He asked me to send him a swatch and he keyed actually the anodizing process as closely as possible to the wrap. And so it's a little like, I mean, I could have done any green and most people probably wouldn't have noticed. But again, it's pretty dang close to the... It's it's yeah. the little touches yeah. like that that make this build special. Mm -hmm. I, I love 
Uh, it's just this dress up thing, you know? Mm. I, I got a couple for my Supra, yeah. which I'm really excited to install. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. But it's just like the little things that, even if it's just a quick couple minutes yep. out of your day, you get to work on your car and it makes you feel really good. Like it's one less plastic thing. It's one little touch in any touch point that feels premium will always enhance it. While we're in here too, you'll notice that I left all the fenders exposed. So this is the fender. You know what I mean? This is a full front replacement fender. And I wanted to make sure that if people really wanted to know, yes, it is true dry carbon. So we left that open. What What's interesting to me is there's four different manufacturers mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. that's dressing up the engine bay, right? Like this is a different manufacturer. This is a different manufacturer. And this is a different manufacturer. Uh -huh. uh, and then it's like blending in a little bit this yep, too. Yep. And of course the hood, the carbon is all complementing each other. <laughs> a lot of the satin uh -huh. is matching. Mm -hmm. I do like that this is different. Yes. And it's gloss, but part of it is that it's inf infused with this aluminum. Yep. I think that is really neat. I think it looks great. Yeah. You really did a number on this engine base. So then power-wise, performance-wise, has anything been changed? Yeah, so I mean, obviously it's running all the power upgrade mods, right? Uh, again, a full downpipe intake, all the cooling system, the exhaust, the center pipe. The one thing that has not been done as of the, right now is obviously a, a tune. Uh, the downside is right now the, the, the G-Series ECUs are locked from factory. Um, so in order to unlock it, there's actually only one company in the world that currently unlocks the G-Series ECU, and it's in Europe. So mm -hmm. I have to pull the ECU out, package it overnight to them. They'll unlock it. It'll come back. Then I can tune the car, which we plan on doing. It was just something that we didn't want to take a chance right before SEMA, because if that ECU got lost or did not come back in time, this car would have been bricked and could not get to SEMA. Yeah, because you really pride yourself also in being able to drive the cars 100%. to the show. Like you drove it here to my place. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is crazy. This car, I mean, I, it's such a huge risk, but all usually SEMA builds because of the, the invested hours and money and all the responsibility and obligation to partners, I usually will spend the money to transport the cars out to SEMA so that nothing happens to the car. This car on the 11th hour, as we were getting ready to load it, it was a half an inch too wide to fit on the trailers. We scrambled to find two or three other companies. Nobody could accommodate this car because of the width. I had to decide the day before rolling in Tread Pass, I had to just suck it up, blue tape this, and drive this to Vegas. So this drove from, to Vegas. From Los Angeles. Yeah, from Los Angeles. SoCal, all the way out to Vegas, four hour drive on a brand new six figure build. I mean, it was the most nerve wracking thing, but also a testament to the fact that the car does run and it's put together and it functions. It's not just a roller. So it, this rolled into Tread Pass, driven. It, it, it. <laughs> In terms of interesting video things, that would have been pretty cool. It's yeah. like I, I uh, people pride themselves in being able to do that. But yeah. let's be real. A lot of these cars, maybe not so crazy. Mm -hmm. This is just, I mean, anything could have fallen off on this. And it's all like one-off pieces. Yep. And that's the scary thing. So there is one hiccup that we ran into. And I share the story because it's hilarious. So we ran, we drove. And again, keep in mind, this kit has just been produced. And as I got ready to go SEMA, right around high desert, right around the time we got to Barstow, the front lip actually ripped off. <gasps> so I was driving, it was the middle, it was like 4.30 in the morning, it's pitch black, I'm driving, and then I hear something scraping, and a second later I can feel like I ran over something. And my heart sank because I knew something had come off the car. Oh no. And I waited till I got to about Baker because I just, I couldn't stomach pulling over on the freeway to look. I'm just like, I, there's nothing I can do about it at this point. When we arrived at Baker to gas up, I noticed the front lip was missing. And I messaged Davis. I said, Davis, you're not going to believe this. The front lip ripped off. And we panicked for a little bit. But the crazy story is a buddy named Kent, Swan River Racing, he had also ordered this wide body. He has car number one. His kit was sitting in Florida, but he chose, he opted not to build for SEMA because he was gonna hold back. So we called Kent six in the morning and said, Kent, we need a huge favor. Can you dig in your crate, pull out your front lip and overnight that to us? And Kent was super MVP. He graciously had his team pull out the lip, packed it up, shipped it to the tune of almost $2,000 to overnight a box that big, but we had to do it. What could we do? And so we overnighted it to the Aria Hotel 
And there's, there's actually my friends have photos of me hand carrying the lip in again day one. So if you actually look at SEMA photos, if any photographer caught this car during the first two hours of SEMA, like maybe 8, 9 a.m., you'll see photos of the car without the front lip. Very few, very few. But I had to rush to get that on. And then the rest of the photos from that SEMA show had the complete car. What a story. Yeah. But hey, we all hit challenges, you know what I mean? Somewhere on the 15 freeway, this lip. There's a destroyed just version of this yeah. lip on the 15. And, and, and it's funny, my buddy, Mike Porter, as he was transporting more cars, he's like, where about did it happen? I'm gonna look for it. I'm like, it happened here. And he's like, I can't find it. He's like, I thought I saw it, I didn't. Like, they were, what does it matter? It doesn't matter, it would have been that destroyed. Point, yeah, you, yeah. You, and plus, <laughs> what would you have done? Wrapped it carbon? No, it probably would have just hung on the wall as a souvenir. Uh, <laughs> Can I just point out how cool this feature is? Like, I, I love that there. It's a, it's like a continuation of the design. Yep. I really, really like that. Yeah. I also love the fact that it's not a bolt-on look. Yeah. For this, I, yeah. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. It it complements the lines of the G eighty. Mm hmm. Uh, I think it's super cool. Let's go ahead and talk about the interior. You always pride yourself in using the best. Recaro seats. Yes. I mean, just this is no this is no exception. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't even know what is this. This is actually the Recaro Podium carbon seats. This is a seat that was in pre-production for quite a long time. Got released about a year ago, but even due to COVID supply chain issues, just it was hard to get a hold of some of these. You know, very few. Now it's a little bit different. Now I think everybody has plenty of inventory. But this is a seat that I saw debuted. Uh, conceptually about three years ago. I actually wanted to run this on that Vera Supra, but it w just wasn't available. So we went with the uh, RMS Pro Racers, the Japanese Recaro seats. Um, but now that this was available, I said, this is the seat that needs to go into the M4 um, because it's a mix of obviously the use of carbon fiber, which I think is cool. But it also has a like, again, I love unique style seats. Um, you know, that's why I continue to search so for the cool. coolest seats. So yeah, I mean, this this is again the podium seat, which is absolutely comfortable. It is everything that, I mean, again, it's, it's, it, it can be an everyday bucket seat for sure. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful seat. Yeah. The steering wheel yeah. is special. With modern day steering wheels, because of electronics and everything, right? All the controls, whether it's the infotainment or, you know, with now the digital displays, there's a lot of your controls on the display. So, when you move to an aftermarket steering wheel, a lot of times you have to sacrifice losing that or set off a Christmas tree of errors and lights. Uh, our friends over at JQ Works designed this. I mean, at, before JQ Works, I think there was really only one other company that offered a steering wheel hub that works for the, G, you know, the BMWs. JQ Works debuted their F chassis at Beamer Invasion. I saw it, it was beautiful. Um, if you touch and feel, all of this is, is custom cut billet. So the quality, the build quality, the, the tactile feeling, every button, it's just, it's a beautiful piece. And the cool part is it's actually a detachable mm -hmm. hub. And you'll notice, I mean, obviously there's other airs from everything else open, but no airs are set off by me removing the steering wheel right now. And so this is fully, everything works. Um, the moment you obviously click it back in, the lights will work, all of the controls work. Um, you can utilize obviously any three spoke steering wheel, whether it's Momo, Sparco, you know, the user can choose. So you'll see a lot of different configurations. I ended up going with this sort of like stealth Momo look, but yeah, this steering wheel was a, a, the very first piece that JQ Works put out. And again, I can't say enough great. I mean, again, like I said, it's like what we talked about touch points. Your hand is on the steering wheel all the time and to be able to click through the buttons, this feels like I'm driving a sim racer every day. And then to add that on my left hand and on my right hand to be able to, sh you know, roll through the gears with a short shifter with CAE, you know, this always is my favorite, you know? So I, I put a CAE shifter in my GR Corolla, fell in love with it. I asked them, hey, can you send me one over for the, the G series? They were able to do that. Um, this is the control to the Prazis system. And then out back, we have the Schroth harnesses attached to a Studio RSR roll cage. Uh, again, where we keyed in that sort of like white gold look um, that you see on the work wheels. I love what Studio RSR does. Uh -huh. They're actually building the cage on my 350Z right yeah. now, and they actually built the cage on my G86 Time Attack car. Yep, yep. So this is their half cage, along with the re rear seat delete panel. So you'll see that it just kind of covers out the rear seat instead of leaving that cavity open. So then the bottoms of the rear seats are still there. Yeah. But then you deleted the rest of uh -huh. it. The seat backs, because you would, I mean, you can see based on the way the rear, the rear legs of the cage travel, 
there would have been no way to retain that rear seat back. So yeah. it would have been, again, just this open cavity. And so, again, the, the Alcantara seat delete just really kind of keeps the rear of the car looking classy still without looking like a gutted race car, you know? Huh. And this is re really convenient that the, the air controller is just right there, too. Yep. So we were able to basically use a typical magnetic cell phone holder because uh -huh. um, this is a sort of a magnetic piece that we mounted yeah. here. And then it allows me to keep it just right here. I also have, I think from Prazis somewhere here, a wireless control. So I can control the, the different preset heights mm. outside of the car if I need to. What an absolute, very, very complete build. <laughs> Like I said, this was, a, again, truly a late but very special. Like I always say, I, I joke with Davis that I was really pressured to build this. I didn't want to initially, but I'm so glad he talked me into it because, again, it's one of the first, along with the Aston Martin, but this was, like, one of the first, like, true, like, European builds that I kind of got to do. And then the partners, again, that helped out on this, really, I, there's no way I could absorb the footprint after saying yes to four other cars. I contacted IND. I, I, I work with them with the A90 Supra. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this wide body agile kit. Like, you think you guys might be able to support the car? And, you know, I expected small amounts of support. And they basically said, hey, put anything you want on our website in the shopping cart. It's yours. And I was like, are you really serious about that? And, and I, so, so I started adding, you know, I want this. I want this engine cover. I want this intake. I want this exhaust. And I just kind of sent it over to IND, half expecting them to reject 80% of it. And then I got a tracking number and I'm like, I, you know, when you watch those shows when we were kids where people go through the grocery store with a shopping cart and they just start, you get 60 seconds to add everything you want. Or yeah. like, you know, I think Mr. Beast does stuff like that too, yeah. where they're like, go to Best Buy and put in whatever you want. We'll pay for it. That's the closest thing I've experienced to that. To be able to build out almost a $60,000, $70,000 IND shopping cart and for them to just send me over a tracking number. I've never experienced that. Um, it's really hard for people to grasp how much it costs to actually build one of these cars. Yeah. And what I've been doing with my recent builds, I've actually been totaling everything yeah. just in parts alone, not including labor. Yep. Do you have kind of a, do you have like a, a, a estimated figure for yeah. this? So, so the base car, $82,000. The Adra wide body, $35,000. And then every other supportive mod that went into this car, probably in the vicinity of $74,000. So we're looking at all in about a $220,000 build, including the car, obviously. Yeah, but that's not even including one little bit of labor. Yeah, and the labor I'm, I'm not even including between all the time that I put in, Studio RSR put in, Airworks, their team doing this wrap, uh, my buddy Tuan doing a lot of the body work with me, like no labor, $220,000 to replicate this car right now. So it, it's not far-fetched to say if somebody were to build this from scratch, it would be a $270,000, $280,000 build. Probably all in, yeah. Again, that's what I mean by it's lost on a lot of individuals when they look at things like this mm -hmm. and they, th they think, oh, maybe you spent $30,000 mm -hmm. on this build over the cost of the car. No mm -hmm. way, that's just, that doesn't even get you the body kit. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think people have an odd perception of what they think a full build is. And they'll see the obvious stuff like the wheels and a body kit and say, okay, I see the money there. But they're not going to see all the suspension work, all the detail work, all the billet work, all the labor work. That stuff is unseen. You just know it's there, but nobody else does on the internet, you know? Um, and that's why I keep saying, like, there's no way I would have been able to do this quarter million dollar project and four other cars if it wasn't for those partners. I can't stress that enough, you know? And I'm grateful because again, like I said, I'm not a shop, you know, but the funny culmination to this project is again, Agile pressured me into doing this. They twisted my arm into doing this, but a, a career first happened for me. Um, I'm so grateful that we got to link up to feature this car right now, but in two or three days, this is going to be exchanging hands. Typically when I build a SEMA car, I will build it, promote it, show it, go to shows, do all the media stuff. And then once it's all the obligations are done, I will quietly exit out of a car because I need to pull the funding back out to be able to build new cars for the next SEMA show. It's just, it's just reality. I can't do, build unlimited cars. Adro actually approached me and, you know, probably by the time this video is out there, it'll already be public knowledge, but Adro is actually buying this car back from me because they want to keep this 
as their demo card. They don't want this to go into a private person's hands. They don't want this to go into a proprietor's. You know, they want to keep this as their demo card, which one, it, I think it's the best type of handoff that can be possible. But I also think that, you know, to me, that's it's for me as a builder, I think I take great pride in that, that, that the company who sponsors you to do the project, commissioned you to do the project, then likes it so much that say, no, we want it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good representation of the brand, honestly. Yeah. It is, it, it would probably take way more work for them to do it yeah. themselves because it's not what they do. They yeah. build parts. They're not, they don't build full cars. Yeah. All right, let's go for a ride. Yep. So, parking brake. Parking brake, yep. These seats are so comfortable. It is. <laughs> You should be really good on clearance okay. right now with the car aired up. The suspension's not stiff at all. It's very, yeah. very nice. It's supple and it's come a long ways from the original days of air suspension where it was super bouncy and you felt like you were on water. While not an air guy, I am very impressed with how far air suspension technology has come. For I think an everyday cruiser, you could do air suspension and be good with it. Yeah, I think I'm, that's what this is for. Yeah. Right? Yep. Although I wouldn't mind taking this to the racetrack. <laughs> oh, this shifter is nice too. Yeah. Has a good feel. Beyond the benefits of the, obviously the shorter throws, it's just nice to have that mechanical connection to the car. So I've driven a manual G80, G82, uh -huh. and also I've driven the all-wheel drive yeah. uh, automatic one. Okay. And you know, the all-wheel drive one, not that compares in terms of how fast it is. Of course. It is like a German four-door GTR. Uh huh. That's the only way I can explain it. <laughs> but this, there's nothing like the visceral experience of driving something like this, you know? 100%. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> Gotta love turbo cars. Yep. Just sounds, I love, I just love it. Sounds so good. It really does drive nice. I yeah. mean, it, it drives just like a normal car. Yep. Aside it sounding like it's gonna kill somebody. <laughs> Honestly, you don't need any more power for it being a street car. No. Just no. <laughs> no point. It's yeah. already. You know, you really do need those 345s in the back for it being a manual, turbo, yeah. yep. uh, modern touring car like this. Sure, sure. Having more power in a street-driven car is really just for pure vanity purposes, to just to be able to throw out a big number. But for driver enjoyment and a practicality purpose, you're never gonna use the upper end of that power on a street, you know what I mean? And that's one of the things I always tell people like, Sometimes, and again, it's it's a hot take, but sometimes good suspension is better than power mods, right? Because that's what connects you to the road. That is a visceral experience, not necessarily an extra 200 horsepower that you'll never use on the street anyways, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. Well, thanks for letting me drive this. I know this is a quickie. Yep. We're both really, <laughs> really busy. Um, but it's, it's a pleasure to feature all of your cars. I, you know, starting I, from the Supra, which was something that's so near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Uh, to, to all the other builds, you know, to your Aston Martin that just went up. Um, just so many, so many cool builds, and I can't wait to see what you're gonna build next. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity as always. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift, or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.